I hope everything is going well with you. This is just a supplemental video for um, practice for things that we've been doing. We Had we been in school, we would have done, uh, had a practice day and then uh, taken a quiz. Obviously, we're not going to be taking any quizzes uh, for right now, certainly. So, um, I will, this is just practice for you. There is a worksheet online that um, I would have given you and that has, I'm going to do some of the problems from this worksheet after we do this warm-up. So again, this is just optional. I hope everything is going well with you. Everything is going well with me here, our family. We have kids and grandkids here, so things are going pretty well for us. Again, I hope the same for you. So this problem was part of a long answer, free response. I forget which year, but the kids came out saying, oh my gosh, Ms. Getz, we had no idea how to do this. And the thing is that they do know how to do it, but I understand the way it was presented. It looks, they hadn't practiced anything presented this way to them. But I want you to think about your factoring brain or just different ways to write this. With the first clue to you being, uh, they're asking me about series and I see an e to the x. And I told you in the last video there are some very famous series. The geometric series, A over 1 minus R, famous. Then there is E sine and cosine, very famous. So it is worth your time to memorize E to the X. So if you know nothing else, you see this, you at least write down E to the X, right? Here's E to the X. Now, writing that down may help you recognize, especially after you see me do it, I have an equal sign. And when I have an equal sign, I'm allowed to do whatever I want to one side of the equation as long as I do the same thing to the other side of the equation. Right? Well, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to subtract 1. Watch what happens when I do that. Just subtracting 1 from both sides. Right? And when you subtract 1, I mean, you're used to doing this in, right, in Algebra 1. Right? If you have, right, 5 is equal to x squared minus 2x plus 4, and you want to subtract 5 from both sides, you, you don't subtract the 5 from the x squared and the minus 2x, right? Right? So that's what I'm going to do over here. I am subtracting 1 from this side. Well, they don't match, so it's just going to be e to the x minus 1. But here, the ones are going to go away, right? So now I have e to the x minus 1, which is the numerator of this. So I now went from something I memorized or something I can build pretty easily to something that looks almost like what they want and the only thing I did was subtract one from both sides. Well, what's different about what they are asking for and what I have? I'm just going to multiply by 1 over x, but I have to, if I'm going to multiply by 1 over x on the left, I have an equation. I need to multiply by 1 over x on the right. Yes, this is what I meant about my factoring brain, to be able to see this expression up here in pieces. Right? See what they want, but see it in pieces. Well, there's e to the x, then there's e to the x minus 1, and there is dividing by x, or multiplying by 1 over x. So that's what I got. Check to see that my right general term works. And again, you should say this works when n is equal to 1, not at 0, right? But they don't really require that of you. I mean, I could fix it, right? All right, so again, if you've 
If you go to Canvas and print out this worksheet or just copy in your notes these problems, this is again the back of the quiz practice worksheet. So this is very similar to a long answer problem involving series and they are going to do of the new AP exam they said they were going to test series and it's going to be long answer so 45 minutes it has to be three long answer questions right so it could be something like this this is again a very AP style is question because they give you a function but they don't tell you what the function is they tell you it's differentiable and they give you derivatives. Now again, since they say Taylor, they have to follow that information, that Taylor has to be followed with a center, but hopefully you are not surprised by the center, right? So they want the first four terms. They've given me five, which is a little odd, although can you figure out why. That's the caveat, right? So an unknown function f can be approximated by its Taylor series representation, which is exactly the function at the center plus the first derivative, which is negative 2, which was evaluated at the center times x minus 0 to the first over 1 factorial, and so on and so forth. I have a zero term, don't I? Because I'm up to four terms here. One, two, three, four, but this term is zero so I have to keep going but fortunately they gave me right that's 4 factorial right 24 and I don't have to write that I could just write 4 factorial right I don't have to write 24 okay so that's part A. Pretty routine. Do you know Taylor series? Do you have the factorials? Right? Do you have the powers? Do you recognize a zero term? So now expect the next parts to refer to what you've done here. Right? Long answer for AP. Most of the times, the, not, not all the time, but many times what you're doing is building from part A to part B to part C. So this is part B. Suppose a different function g is equal to the function we just worked with f. Now, I don't know what that function is, but I know that I know it's Taylor approximation. Hey, pretty girl. So that is f. I know f. And what are they asking me for? g is related to f through composition. So g of x is equal to f of x squared, which is approximately... f with the only difference being we're going to replace x with x squared. You don't have to clean this up if you don't want to. You can, especially if you're matching multiple choice. But
but you don't have to. Up here, you could leave just like this. Okay. So let's look what part C is asking. So be careful. Again, expect these problems to build off of one another, but read your directions. Are you building, is part C referring to what you just did in part B, or is it referring back to the part A, or is it referring back to the original? Right, always pay attention and read the fine print. So here's C, and it tells me that some different function x is related to f. So g, what we were just working with, is not involved in this problem at all. So, use this information. Again, I need first non-zero, first four non-zero. Taylor has to be followed with center. So, what are they telling me here? They're giving me h prime is f of x. I don't know what f of x is, but I know f of x approximator. So I know the approximator. Now, what are they telling me? They're telling me this is equal to h prime of x. But then they're also giving me information not about h prime, but of h. Well, this is an initial condition, isn't it? So a function I don't know, but whose derivative I know. Its derivative is f. Well, if I have a derivative and I want the original, what do I have to do? How do you undo a derivative? Take the antiderivative of h prime, you get h. To get the terms of h's approximator, I have to anti-differentiate term by term. And what do I get there? x squared over 2. And then what do I have? Um, 3x minus x squared plus 5x cubed over the 2, but also then times 3. Plus 7 over 24 times 5 x to the fifth plus what plus what plus c baby don't forget that now what what is that what does that mean how do I solve for c hello so if they're telling me six is equal to h of 0, so I'm going to put 0 in for all this, so what am I going to get? 0, 0, 0, and 0, so 6 is equal to c, therefore h of x is approximately, now the con when you're doing a series, right, you should put the constant first because this is really 6x to the 0, And I can stop, can I? How many terms did they ask me for? You will never be penalized if you give more 
and they won't even look at them. So if they're even if they're wrong, nobody cares. But you can't give less, so be careful. And I just took those off because I don't, right? There we go. All right, let's look at D. Oh, no, this is number three. So this is a separate problem, right? So we did number two, had an A, B, and C. So now I'm changing, right? I'm like, I'm done with that problem. I'm going to start fresh. And they're telling, giving me a function G, and immediately I'm in series, and I see this, E to the X right? And P of X is a Maclaurin, so now they don't have to tell me center, do they? I'm supposed to know if they say Maclaurin, what center am I talking about? Good. Zero. This time they just want to know what is in front of X cubed in that polynomial. So let's say you don't know what to do. You're like, what the heck? Again, if you recognized e to the x. What is e to the x is 1 plus x plus, oops, plus x squared over 2 plus x cubed over 3 factorial. Plus dot 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 dot. Right? Remember this is really 2 factorial. This is really 1 factorial. This is really, really 0 factorial. Well, that's e to the x. So I could build e to the 3x by myself, or I could realize that e to the 3x is just a composition, right? In for x, all we have to do is put 3x. one plus x plus x squared over two factorial plus x cubed over three factorial. Do you see why I stopped at the cubed, right? So what am I going to put in there? Into each parenthesis here, I'm going to put a 3x because that's what was put into e. 3x was put in for e, so in e to the x's polynomial expansion, wherever there was an x, I'm going to put a 3x. So, I have my answer, don't I? Whoops. The coefficient is right there. Right, this term looks like 27 x to the third over 3 factorial so the coefficient is 27 over 3 factorial no one cares how you write this right you don't have to would they take off if you have the x cubed here when they only ask for the coefficient I don't think so, but they did just ask for the coefficient, so be careful. All right, that's it for the back. So the front was just more practice in building from scratch, which is... Um, 
I believe not going to be tested like it has been in the past. But just to, for instance, go through um, what they what the worksheet is asking of you, which is not bad to practice. They gave you a function, the cube root. of 1 plus x, which I'm going to write as 1 plus x to the 1 third. Whoops. Right, so to build a poly, just to refresh you about what you're doing, this is f. You need to, they asked for the first four non-zero terms, so you need f prime. F double prime. F triple prime. Whoops. Darn it. Didn't leave enough room there. Ah. Whoops, sorry, I can't add. That should be an eight, right? Then you're taking each one of those expressions and evaluating it at the center. And they asked for the Maclaurin series, so they don't have to tell you what the center is. You're supposed to know that you are doing evaluating f of 0, which is 1, f prime of 0, which is 1 third. F double F double prime of zero, negative two ninths, and F triple prime at the center, which is ten twenty sevenths. And then to build that polynomial. one plus the derivative x to the first, first derivative, minus the second derivative, x squared. And if you see the mistake I'm making, I am doing it on purpose. You don't see, watch out. All right, I'm feeling pretty good about myself, right? Because I've got fractions, I've taken care, I did, I found all the derivatives, I found, I'm sorry, yeah, I found all the derivatives, I evaluated all the derivatives at the center, and then I matched the powers with the, oh, did I match the powers with the factorials? That's what I forgot. Don't forget the yell points. So I have to, and sometimes kids seem to forget those when they've got fractions, right? They don't forget them. They tend to remember them more if all the derivatives are um, integers, right? So don't forget, there's a zero factorial there. There's a one factorial there. None of that matters, right? Doesn't matter if you leave it up, but there's a two factorial here and a three factorial here. And then certainly those two would cancel out, but you don't have to, you don't have to simplify them, but you can't forget them. Right? So you can simplify these if you like.
but it is not required. Sorry, I was looking at a text. So then this problem asks you to compare the values. Since I did actually give you the function, you can actually plug in f of 0.5, which is not very far from the center, and see how close is it to the polynomial at 0.5. Right, I did that on my calculator, and I got like 0 .00, right, 0 .002-ish, right, so very close. So using only one, two, three, four terms of this polynomial, I got very close to this function. Pretty impressive. So um, part C of this problem has you practice with the center not being at zero, but your center being at, where is it, uh, negative two. So notice your derivatives wouldn't change. To do this problem, your derivatives don't change at all. All that changes is that line in white where you're going to be evaluating the function at negative two the first derivative at negative 2, the second derivative at negative 2, and the third derivative at negative 2. Then when you make your polynomial, you're going to be using the derivatives I'm sorry, when I plug this in, I would get negative 1. You'll use the derivatives. You'll use the matching factorials with the power, but the power doesn't go with x to the first. It goes with x minus negative 2, which turns into x plus 2, right, to the first. And then you would use the second derivative evaluated at negative 2, over 2 factorial, and you do need an x squared, but it needs to be x minus negative 2. Plus the third derivative evaluated at negative 2 over 3 factorial with the matching power of 3, but your center is not 0 anymore, so I can't call it McLaurin. There you go. I leave it to you to get those values of the derivative. And then notice that this problem asks you to look at f of not 0.5, but of negative 2.2 and compare it to the polynomial at negative 2.2. And when you do that, notice that in here, right, you're still going to get a very small delta x, right? But the center of this polynomial expansion is at, right? So if you kind of want to sort of think about here at negative 2, the polynomial and the uh, function are exactly equal at negative 2, and then the error to the right and left Right? You're only going to use values around this little cloud to approximate, as opposed to up here. Right, You're talking about centering at 0, so wherever at 1, right, you're only going to use, zero, you're only going to use values close to 0 to approximate values to the right and the left of 0. Okay, and then part D just changes the center again to 7, so more practice. And then, so I want to skip that, but I do want to go to um, part E. Because part E, if you're not careful, you'll do way too much work for part E. Part E says, 
give me the first four terms of Maclaurin centered at zero, where g is equal to the cube root of, hey, I think I've written this before, 1 plus, instead of x, 1 plus what? Yeah, x squared. So if you recognize this, no one said manipulation, but you need to recognize this, that g is equal to f of a composition. Instead of f of x, what is it? x squared. And I already did the work for f of x, so I just need to bring that down here and say 1 plus 1 third x to the first minus I'll just simplify that, 1 over 9 x squared plus Oh, that reduces, doesn't it? 5, because 3 times 2, that's going to be 5. So what is that? 5 over 81. Check my math on that. x cubed. And just put in, use composition, and instead of x, put in x squared. And again, you can leave it this way, since it's free response, or you can clean it up if you want. But notice, I didn't have to find any more derivatives. Is that a plus or a minus? Minus, isn't it? This is equal to polynomial expansion, which approximates g of x. But remember, I did a lot less work because I'd already done the work to find f, and I recognized that g was the same as f, except for a composition of x squared in place of x. Cool? All right. I hope you have a good rest of your day. This uh, worksheet, again, that I referred to at the beginning is on Canvas along with solutions. Feel free to email me with any questions. Take care. Thinking about you always.